Welcome. So, let's introduce a problem that was vexing people in the mid 19th century after we had formalized all of electromagnetism. We have two people with a bit more updated names, Adele, who is going to be stationary relative to the ground, and Beyonce, who is going to be carrying a charge, but moving relative to the ground with a speed v. So we can say that the velocity of Adele in Adele's reference frame, VAA, is of course zero. We can say that the velocity of Beyonce in Beyonce's re reference frame is zero, but we can say that the re velocity of Beyonce in Adele's reference frame is v. And the same goes for the charge, that the charge would also be v, but then the charge, right, in Beyonce's reference frame is going to be zero. So for Adele, we see a charge moving in a magnetic field. So we can do QV cross B would give us a force pointing upwards. And so we can say, right, in frame A, The force in frame A is going to be the charge times the electric field in A plus the velocity of the charge in A crossed with the magnetic field in A. This is our Lorentz force where we've combined the Q times E is the electric force and QV cross B is the magnetic force. So we are saying in this that our electric field E is zero in this frame A. So if it's zero, then we have this. And then we have that the force in frame A is Q, the velocity of the charge in A crossed with the magnetic field in A. Everyone should hopefully feel pretty good about this part. This is not the crazy part, right? We have a charge moving in magnetic field. There should be a force. Now let's get into something interesting. In frame B, I can rewrite this equation just with right, the subscripts B. So I have the force in frame B is Q, the electric field in frame B, plus the velocity of the charge in frame B crossed with the magnetic field in B. And this is where things get interesting. This is where things get fun because the velocity of the charge in B, right? This charge is moving at the same speed as Beyonce, so this entire thing must be zero because VCB is equal to zero. This is a problem, and why is this a problem? Because we need forces to agree in different reference frames. We can have the velocity be whatever we want. We can have all sorts of other things be whatever we want. Positions can change and all that. But our forces have to agree. We can't have changing forces depending on which reference frame you're in. No matter what we do to the magnetic field, we're still always going to be multiplying it by 0. So our B sub B. won't help. What does this mean? What's left to provide the force? Because we know we need F sub A to equal F sub B. Well, let's write it in. F sub A is Q VCA crossed with B sub A. And FB is Q times EB. So very easily, we can cancel out the Qs. And so what we get is we get the electric field in region B is VCA cross BA. VCA is the same as VBA. So we can write it as E sub B is VBA. This is the velocity I need to transform from 
reference frame A to reference frame B crossed with BA. If we have a electric field as well, if EA is not equal to zero, we can still use this FA equals FB We have the force in frame A equals the force in frame B. We need to have right in frame A Q EA plus VBA cross with BA equals Q EB plus VBB crossed now, any velocity relative to itself is going to be zero, so this is zero. We can cancel out the Qs, and so we get in general, and I will note this is not including special relativity, general relativity, anything like that. So this is when V is much, much less than C. Then our electric field in reference frame B is going to be equal to the electric field in reference frame A plus this. This is weird. What this is saying is that we agree that the forces can't change no matter whether we change reference frames. In order for the forces not to change, the electric field needs to be one of the quantities that can change with change of reference frame. Up until now, the things that could change with change of reference frame are velocity and position. So what this is saying is it's saying that, right, electric and soon magnetic fields change under Galilean transformations. But that makes sense. We invented these electric fields to be something to help us understand the universe. They're not something that we can actually measure, but they're something that help us understand forces. What's weird is that, right, one of our fictitious fields is affected by a different one of our fictitious fields, that the electricity and the magnetism right, influence each other depending on what it looks like. So they're allowed to change under Galilean transformations in order for the forces to be constant under Galilean transformations. And we'll also look at how the magnetic transform works as well. 